Hello, I'm Rev. Dr. Redonia Thomas, pastor of Bethlehem and Laurel Creek United Methodist Church. We are one church in two locations. Please see our Facebook page or our website for times of our regular service in the sanctuary. <coughs> Excuse me. We are finding new ways to gather in these uncertain times. So I'm so glad that you're joining me today on um, social media. So today I want to share with you a word from the Lord. This is Holy Week and it's Monday, Thursday, and I believe God has given me something to share with you today. I'm going to invite you to turn in your Bibles to um, John chapter 13 verses 2 through 9. John chapter 13 verses 2 through 9. Hear the words of the Lord. The evening meal was in progress and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and he was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing and wrapped a towel around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. This is the word of God for the people of God. Say, thanks be to God. I'm going to invite you to pray with me. Lord, we thank you for another opportunity to hear what the Holy Spirit would speak to us. Dear God, I, I yield myself that you might speak through me. Speak to the hearts and the minds of those that are listening today. Reveal yourself through your word. Give us understanding. Draw us into a closer realm with you. God, we ask you to have your way in this word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, my friends, people wanted Jesus dead. The day before he was arrested, or actually coming up to his arrest, he wanted to have a final evening meal with his disciples. John tells a rather uncomplicated story. He talks about them having, Jesus having supper with his disciples, and they were in the upper room, and they were reclining, in um, some form or fashion around on the floor around the meal. And so they sat with their feet extended and, and they ate from the floor. I want you to understand that as they reclined, their dirty feet were exposed for all to see. The Jerusalem streets were, were dry and they were dusty. They were not the regular paved roads like we have today. And so they wore sandals. And, and um, when they came into a building, if they didn't wash their feet, they, they were dusty and dirty. Please understand that at a Jewish feast, there would be a slave when you came in who would wash your feet. But Jesus and, and the disciples were poor and there were no slaves there to wash their dirty feet. 
The text tells us that after supper, Jesus got up, poured water in a basin, wrapped a towel around his waist, and he proceeded to wash the disciples' feet. Jesus, their master, their teacher, was washing his disciples' feet. This was almost unheard of. A Jewish man, free man, never washed anybody's feet. In all of scripture, this never happened. Even when the angels came to visit Abraham, Abraham poured water in a basin and they washed their own feet. This menial task was, was always performed by a slave or by yourself. A teacher did not wash the feet of his students. People of status did not wash dirty feet. This just didn't happen. Feet washing, what we're seeing in this text, is a Christian tradition upheld usually during um, Holy Week on Monday, Thursday. It's a long-standing Christian tradition. But the question is, what does feet washing really mean? What is it all about? What was Jesus trying to say to his disciples? What was Jesus trying to say to us today? Well, church, I want to share with you three things that I believe Jesus was trying to get across to his disciples back then and to us, his followers. One, we must be willing to serve in the lowest manner. Jesus was not too high and mighty that he would not stoop to serve his brethren. He loved not only in word, but in deed. He laid aside his throne. See, he came from heaven. And he laid aside his, his throne, picked up a towel, and washed dirty feet. See, he faced the dirty feet of jealousy and envy, hatred and strife. He faced the dirty feet of bitterness and arrogance and pride. Yet he continued to move forward to the cross. He showed them that he was willing to lower himself, to humble himself, so that they might be better people. Oh, church, he became their servant. He lowered himself. He humbled himself. For people by washing their dirty feet. Are there jobs in your community, in your congregation that are beneath you? When was the last time you picked up some trash from around the pew, volunteered in the kitchen, went in the uh, the, the bathroom and, and picked up or cleaned up? When was the last time you worked in the nursery? See, sometimes we're in such positions in the community that we feel like we shouldn't serve in such a low manner. Jesus knew who he was and, and washing his disciples Dirty feet did not change the fact that he came from God and he would be going back to God. So he was willing to serve in a low manner. Church, I also believe that this text is telling us to, to be willing to let Jesus wash us. You see, every soul needs washing. Every now and again, 
every soul needs cleansing from sin. All have sinned, the Bible says, and have fallen short of the glory of God. Washing is an act of purifying. It's an act of cleansing. Throughout the Bible, the act of washing is significant for those in the service of God. Water and the blood was all part of the cleansing process. In the communion sacraments, we remember that Jesus was the lamb that was slain, and that blood still covers us today. Remember, remember the children of Israel on the night they escaped from Egypt? How the death angel passed over the houses that had the, the blood stained on the doorposts? Oh, my friend, the blood of Jesus still works. We must be willing to be washed in the blood of Jesus. We need to submit. We need to submit to our Lord and let him wash that filthy part of us. See, see, every now and again, we need the sin washed out of our life. Dirty feet is not the whole body. Every now and again, we all get dirty and we need washing. We go to places we shouldn't go with our tongue. And, and we need a washing. All the, the backbiting and, and gossiping and cursing and cussing. Oh my goodness. Fussing with people. Every now and again, we need a cleansing. Church, every now and again, we go places with our dirty feet that we shouldn't be going. We shouldn't be seen in. Whether it's a motel or a hotel or some club or crib. And we need a washing. We need a cleansing. Every now and again, we go places with our attitude. Arrogance. And arrogant and, and anger and, and, oh my goodness, pride and, and prejudice. Jesus is saying no matter how dirty your feet get, he can wash them clean again and again and again. No matter how holy or how lowly his blood reaches to the highest mountain and flows to the lowest valley. You need to ask yourself, do I have dirty feet? Holy Week is a great time to let Jesus wash them clean. And finally, my friend, we must be willing to have a part with Jesus. See, Peter resisted Jesus washing his feet until Jesus said to him, you're not going to have a relationship with me if you don't allow me to do this. For Peter, it was unthinkable that his master would stoop so low to wash his feet. It wasn't that Jesus was too good. I believe it was that Peter felt he wasn't good enough to accept what Jesus was doing for him. My friend, when we think about all that Jesus went through that holy week, when we think of all the suffering, the betrayal, the beating, the rejection, the pain and the agony, when we think about his sacrificial death on the cross, it is too outrageous to believe that he has such a great love for us. We can't understand. And many times we feel like we're not good enough to receive that love. Our life has taken us in, in different directions and, and we've done some things we're so ashamed of that we don't know how to accept the love that Jesus gives us each and every day. My friend, 
can we just accept that love that Jesus extends to us? We ask ourselves, am I worthy of such a great love that the Lord of glory would do the unthinkable for such a sinner like me? We ask ourselves, can, can I turn away? How can I see others less than me when I have been unworthy of such an outrageous love? How can I, I deny Jesus Christ is Lord of my life with a love like that. It's a love like no other, life-changing, life-rearranging love that Jesus only wants us to receive. It was freely given. He wants us to freely accept all that he has done. My friend, dirty feet are being cleansed each and every day in every way as we submit and surrender to the great love of God and accept it. Accept it in such a way that the evidence of that love begins to flow out of our life. The evidence of that love is working in us and it's working through us and, and it's working in such a way that we are helping people get their dirty feet cleansed. Oh, my friend, we are now partners in God's kingdom. We have a part with him, a relationship with him. Accept that today. And humbly accept that Jesus wants you to have this love, wants you to have this life in his kingdom. Each of you, I pray that as you go forth this day, you will receive what Jesus has done for you and what he is speaking to you throughout this, this scripture, this lesson today. My friends, receive the word in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Dear God, for those of us with dirty feet, we ask you to forgive us, to cleanse us. And Father, set us free to walk in your love and your goodness, to reach out to others that they might see and take hold of all that you've done on the cross. Take hold of that broken body and the blood so that they could be cleansed each and every day. Father God, we thank you. We praise you. In this holy week, we remember your goodness towards us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. My friends, I pray that you will hear this word and receive it. I pray that you will join me tomorrow as I bring a word to you from the cross of Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for being with us today. May God bless you. Thank you.